Welcome to the Soccer Tavern, where we're discussing the history, culture, and philosophy of the beautiful game. My name is Dave, and we are starting a new series of videos discussing the history of soccer clubs around the world. We're going to start in England with the Premier League and go in alphabetical order. So, first up, AFC Bournemouth. Pull up a seat and let's start the discussion. AFC Bournemouth is located in the northeastern part of the town of Bournemouth. The town is located on the southern coast of England in the United Kingdom. Bournemouth currently play in the Premier League. The club's home ground is called the Vitality Stadium and holds 11,464 people. Vitality is the stadium's corporate name. It used to be called Dean Court, which was opened in 1910. The present club can trace its roots back to 1890 when Boscombe St. John's Institute Football Club were playing locally. Boscombe is the town right next to Bournemouth. That club disbanded in 1899 and from its remains, Boscombe FC were formed at a meeting on Gladstone Road in Boscombe. The club changed names a handful of times over the years before making their final change from Bournemouth and Boscombe Athletic to AFC Bournemouth in 1972. The logic behind this change? They would be listed first in any alphabetical list of English clubs. What's up everyone, Future Dave here with a quick AFC update. The letters AFC and AFC Bournemouth literally stand for nothing. Sometimes when you see AFC for other English clubs, it stands for Association Football Club, but that is not the case for AFC Bournemouth. It is literally just letters at the beginning of the club's name to have them listed first in any alphabetical listing. Back to the video. The club's nickname is the Cherries, which comes from 1910, and there are two possible explanations. The first is that the club simply wore cherry red striped shirts, and the nickname comes from that. The second is that Dean Court was built next to the Corper Dean estate, and that included many cherry orchards. Side note, the club actually switched from their original kit color of cherry red to plain red from the mid-1930s to 1960s, but switched back to cherry red in the 1970s and have worn that ever since. Now let's talk about the club's crest. Versions of today's crest were first used from 1971 until 1981. It resembles a computer animation of a player's head and a ball. There have been subtle tweaks to this crest over the years, but it's basically been the same crest since 1983. The silhouette is that of Dickie Dowsett, the former striker and commercial manager of the club who was instrumental in dropping the Boscombe from the club's name in 1972. The black and red vertical stripes on the right side of the crest are reference to the club's kit, and obviously the club's name is at the top. Overall, pretty simple crest. Personally, I don't love the current crests, and instead, I'd like to talk about Bournemouth's coat of arms, which were the club's crest from 1923 until 1971. The tree and roses at the top of the crest symbolize the city of Bournemouth's award-winning gardens and parks. The center section is a shield based on the arms of King Edward the Confessor, whose royal estate was in the area that became Bournemouth. The four salmon in the lower left corner represent fish from the local river. Each of the lions on Bournemouth's crest holds a rose between its paws, symbolizing England. What look like six birds in the upper right corner are martlets. Martlets have no legs and are mythical, but they do kind of look like sand martins, which are real birds that can be found close to the city of Bournemouth. And finally, the town's motto is at the bottom of Pulcerito at Salubritas, which is Latin for beautiful and healthy. Apologies for that pronunciation. I did not take Latin in school. Now let's discuss three important events in the club's history. First up, in January 1997, the club was 4.5 million pounds in debt. Specifically, they had to pay the Inland Revenue Department, which is the British IRS or British Tax Department, 350,000 pounds, or they'd receive a winding up order. Winding up order is a British term for the forced closure and liquidation of a business. Fans set up a supporters trust and became Europe's first community owned club. The fans and players raised 300,000 pounds, partially helped by a bucket collection. Only five minutes before the noon press conference on January 28th, 1997, did the club executives have enough money to pay the tax bill and save the club. 
The second event occurred about 10 years later. In the 2007-2008 season, the club went into administration, or better known as bankruptcy. The club just couldn't get it together financially during this time. Bournemouth was seconds away from liquidation again until chairman Jeff Mostyn wrote a check for £100,000 to pay off the debt. That saved the club financially, but the English Football League administrators had serious doubts about letting the club play the following season in England's League 2, which was the fourth division and last fully professional division in English soccer. The league decided that the club could play, but would need to start the season with negative 17 points in the standings. Quick reminder, a win is worth three points, so they basically spotted every other club six wins that season. During the, club, during the season, the club went through two managers before being forced into hiring Eddie Howe on New Year's Eve 2008. Howe was a 31-year-old former club legend who had no managerial experience at all. He turned the club's fortunes around, and on April 25, 2009, Bournemouth recorded a dramatic 2-1 home victory over Grimsby Town to save the club from relegation to semi-professional soccer. It was likely the most important season in the club's history. And finally, the third most important event that I'd like to discuss happened on May 2nd, 2015. After waiting 125 years to play first division soccer in England, Bournemouth won 3-0 away against Charlton Athletic to seal their promotion to the top flight for the first time in their history. An interesting fact about Bournemouth supporters is that the Cherry Supporters Trust, which goes back to the organization that helped save the club in 1997, still acts as the main voice of communication with the club for supporters both domestically and internationally. Due to Bournemouth's relative infancy at playing at the top flight level, the two most famous players in their history are likely Jermaine Defoe and Rio Ferdinand, who each have only had short stints with the club. Defoe had a long stint in the 2000-2001 season, and at the time of recording is actually back playing with Bournemouth, signing this past offseason. He scored over 100 goals in the Premier League and has many caps for the English national team. The other player, Rio Ferdinand, then a West Ham player, spent two months on loan between December 1996 and January 1997 when he was 18 years old. He went on to have a legendary career with Manchester United and the English national team. And the, the club certainly has legends and players who are important in the Cherries' history, but these two are likely to be the most well-known, which is why I'm highlighting them here. The club's two most famous managers are likely Harry Redknapp and Eddie Howe. Harry Redknapp was the Cherries' manager during some of the most exciting times in the club's history. Bournemouth came close to promotion out of the old second division and even beat Manchester United in an FA Cup match under his tenure. Harry's famous for his interactions with the press and has managed numerous clubs all over England's different divisions. The other manager, Eddie Howe, was a former player who we've already spoken about with 313 appearances for the club. Injuries forced him into management during that 2008 season, and he was the youngest manager in all of English soccer at the time. He proceeded to lead the club into League One before taking over as Burnley manager for a few seasons. He came back to the Cherries in 2013 and led them to promotion to the Championship, which is England's second division, before following that up with a promotion campaign, what we've already discussed in 2015, into the Premier League. He is current manager of AFC Bournemouth and is thought of as one of the best young managers in all of England. Now it's time to talk about rivalries. Bournemouth doesn't have any real rivals. Southampton would be the closest thing to a rival, but Southampton doesn't really consider Bournemouth to be much of a rival. Bournemouth also consider Portsmouth, Brighton and Hove Albion, and Reading as rivals. The Reading supporter message boards almost completely dismiss Bournemouth as a rival, so I'm not going to discuss them too much since it appears to be a very one-sided rivalry. Southampton, Portsmouth, and Brighton and Hove Albion are all down to proximity. All four clubs play in towns or cities located along England's south coast. That's where I'll leave Portsmouth and Brighton and Hove Albion, since it doesn't appear to be much of a backstory behind those beyond just, hey, they play in the same area. Southampton is definitely Bournemouth's main rival from the Cherries' perspective. Both clubs faced liquidation in 2008 before being saved. Both play in the Premier League now, but the rivalry stretches back to 2011 when they were both in League One. Southampton went on a meteoric rise up to the Premier League, and Bournemouth followed suit only a couple years later. 
The two towns get along extremely well together. The clubs get along well too, which makes this whole rivalry just a bit odd. Also, Bournemouth has only beaten Southampton a handful of times in the league, dating back to the 1950s, so it's not much of a rivalry in Southampton's eyes. It's definitely a weird, quirky rivalry, but it is a rivalry to Bournemouth fans. Time to talk about some stats and records as of February 2018 when I am recording this video. Bournemouth have spent three seasons in the top flight in their entire history. The Cherries have never won a major trophy in English soccer, but they have won the Football League trophy, which is a cup competition played between the lower level teams in the English pyramid. The club's biggest success by far is winning the championship, England's second division, and promotion to the Premier League in that 2014-2015 season. The club's record league appearance holder is Steve Fletcher with 493 appearances. Bournemouth's record league goal scorer is Ron Eyre with 202 goals. The club's record transfer purchase was Nathan Ake from Chelsea FC on June 30th, 2017 for £20 million. The club's record transfer sale was Matt Ritchie to Newcastle United on July 1st, 2016 for about £10 million initially with an additional £2 million in add-ons. And one last fun fact for you about AFC Bournemouth. Dean Court or Vitality Stadium is the smallest ground in the Premier League's history, which dates back to 1992. So there you have it, a bit of history on AFC Bournemouth. Let's continue the discussion in the comment section below the video. Thanks for stopping by the Soccer Tavern. Hope to see you again soon. Cheers.